Yes. Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise and recognize one of the brightest and boldest nuclear leaders with the most revered work ethic and legacy this province and this country has seen in generations. Duncan Hawthorne, the affable and straight shooting president and chief executive officer of Bruce Power, has announced he will be stepping down after leading Canada's only private nuclear power plant for 15 successful years. It's an understatement to say that Duncan, an engineer who advanced from the shop floor to hold senior positions in the UK, US and Canada, has revolutionized nuclear after rebuilding Units 1 and 2 at Bruce Power, the world's largest operating nuclear facility and home to eight can-do reactors. The remaining six reactors have been approved for refurbishment under his leadership and will revitalize the economies across the regions of Grey, Bruce and Huron and, in fact, the entire province. In his 15 years at Bruce Power, Duncan's can-do attitude has helped him reach every goal he has endeavoured to pursue. Just last year, Bruce Power achieved record output for the site, providing over 30 per cent of Ontario's electricity at 30 per cent below the average cost of electricity. Under his leadership, Bruce Power has secured production until 2064. I sincerely enjoyed working with Duncan, which I did up until I ran for public office in 2011, and had the privilege of seeing him work relentlessly to return the site to its full eight-unit potential, thereby establishing a long-term structure that ensures safe, reliable, clean and low-cost electricity for the people of Ontario. I know Duncan will be greatly missed by Bruce Power's 3,000 permanent employees, including boilermakers, carpenters, electricians, insulators, ironworkers and rodmen, laborers, millwrights, operating engineers, painters, pipe fitters and plumbers, sheet metal and roofers and teamsters, and the thousands of tradespeople who will work on the refurb. I invite the House to join me in thanking Duncan for all he has contributed to our community and province and wishing him and his wife Leslie all the best as they return home to the UK, where Duncan will be taking on the challenge of building a new nuclear fleet, the one thing he has not yet accomplished. Yet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Duncan Hawthorne. Thank you for the member's term. It's a member from Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. Following the last election, people had high hopes for this Premier and her government. They believed her when she said that she was going to change the way things were done in this province. Well, it turns out that things have changed. They're worse. They're worse for the people right across this province, but they're getting worse for Northerners. They're getting desperate for Northerners. One woman who lives in Wabagoon, just outside of Dryden, wrote to me about how bad things are getting. She writes, both my son and daughter-in-law work minimum wage jobs. They have three children. Groceries, vehicle insurance, heating costs, and hydro are already out of control. Guess roll out the food bank. Daycare is outrageous. We, the grandparents, have tried to hobble out a schedule. My husband does not work. He is disabled. I work full time. At this rate, I will never be able to retire. We help our family with childcare, groceries, gasoline, and mini loans in between paydays. We live in Wabagoon, Dryden. No mass transportation here. Oh, their four fourth owner vehicle died. A private vehicle is a requirement, not a luxury here in northwestern Ontario. They are currently using my old vehicle. Funds to buy a newer one are just not there. I am ashamed of this government. Speaker, this woman hit the nail on the head of what it, this government is doing wrong in Northern Ontario, and countless others share her struggle. It's disgusting that people should have to work so hard and still not get ahead. When will this government start prioritizing the very basic needs of Northerners? Thank you. Further member statements, the member from the Publico Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, earlier this year, Mayor John Tory announced that he's changing the western portion of the Smart Track Transit Plan along Ellington Avenue to replace heavy rail with an LRT. The LRT would connect Mount Dennis to the Mississauga Airport Corporate Center and Pearson Airport. I have been following this issue closely, Speaker. The Eglinton Corridor is vital to my community, and while some have expressed excitement about new transit, I have also heard concerns about how an LRT could impact traffic along the Eglinton Corridor. I personally believe, Speaker, in smart transit that is built with community input on the basis of a strong business case that includes a plan to address the impacts on the local community. We need a plan that can deliver excellent transit for, for riders that serves the local community and that ensures that taxpayers' dollars are spent wisely. To achieve this, I have consulted with members of the community and local resident and ratepayers organizations. I co-hosted a transit town hall with Ontario's Minister of Transportation, Stephen Del Duca, so that the minister could hear directly from members of my community, participated in a local consultation co-hosted by the City of Toronto and Metrolinx, and I met with Premier Kathleen Wynne and Minister Stephen Del Duca to share my constituents' perspectives and feedback. I know how important it is to build transit, but it is also important that we build the right transit. So to give a blind endorsement of a transit project without knowing all the impacts is not why I ran to be an MPP speaker. I look forward to welcoming the Minister of Transportation to Etobicoke Centre in the coming weeks to see for himself. We need a transit solution that is beneficial to commuters, 
to taxpayers and to our community, and I won't stop working until we achieve that goal. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member statements, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I rise again in this House to raise the issue of great concern to my riding and that of the municipality of Dutton Dunwich. A few weeks ago, this Liberal government awarded five wind turbine projects across the province. And one of those projects was in my own riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London, in the municipality of Dutton Dunwich, who was empha emphatically against the wind project. In fact, the municipality of Dutton Dunwich did their due diligence, conducted a survey of the residents, and did all that before declaring themselves a non-willing host. The survey showed a whopping 84% of the community was against the wind turbine project municipality. That survey was shared with the ministry and many meetings were held to discuss the municipality's desire to be a non-willing host and remain free of any wind turbine projects. However, at the same time, the municipality of Malahide, in my right, just east, declared themselves a willing host and had a company submit a project to the ministry. That project was denied, whereas the Dutton Dunwich project was approved. The government stated that municipalities will have a say in wind power, however, it's clear that's furthest from the truth. This government is blatantly ignoring rural Ontario and the local voice. In a testimony committee in November 2013, this energy minister said municipalities would be given a veto over projects and be very rare indeed for any approved project without a municipal backing. It would be almost impossible for somebody to win one of those bidding processes without support from local municipality. Sure. I'm calling on this government to stop the wind project in Dutton Dunwich. Here, it's here. tearing the community apart. It is my hope that this government do the right thing, the right hold thing. true to their word, and relook at the legitimacy of this project. Here, here. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, 26 cents a difference for the price of gas across the province of Ontario. Tell me how that makes any sense. Tell me how a gas company who refines gasoline in this province can get away with selling gas at 26 cents a differential per gallon uh, in different parts of the province. In Kirkland Lake versus Timmins, which is not very far, it's an hour and 45 minutes down the highway, there's a 12 cent difference. Clearly, the gas companies are colluding. Clearly, the gas companies are doing everything they can to put as much money into their pockets at the cost of the consumer. We as a province have the ability to regulate. City of Timmins has taken a position uh, that they're bringing to council. They're going to be trying to organize various municipalities in order to be able to try to get this provincial government to move on gas price regulations so that we can limit what those companies are doing and take away these huge differentials that we have where you can sell gas at 26 cents a litre difference in one part of the province to the other. I commend our council, I commend our mayor, Steve Black, for taking this on and working with us. What's interesting in the city of Timmins is seeing this not as an issue just for Timmins, but they're trying to bring other communities into this. Kirkland Lake, North Bay is already there, and a whole bunch of other municipalities to be able to tell this government you need to stand up for the, con for the consumers of this province. You need to utilize your regulatory powers as a province and to regulate the price of gas so that the consumer doesn't get gouged. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, the Minister of Training, Colleges, Colleges and Universities came to Durham region, region with good news. Since 1969, the Simca building has been standing on, ca on the campus of Durham College. Though it was clear to everyone that it was only meant to be a temporary fixture, now with $22 million in funding from our government, the Simca building will be replaced with a new facility, one with a plant health science center and entrepreneurship center. Speaker, my daughter attended Durham College, and I know that everyone in my riding sees the campus as a gem in our region and a real benefit to our community. I want to congratulate the staff and students on the work they have done ahead of the college's 50th anniversary in 2017. I also want to thank the member from Ajax, Pickering, the Minister of Children and Youth Services, who along with myself have been tireless advocates for the college from our side of the house. I should also thank the member from Oshawa and the current former members from Whitby, Oshawa, for their effort as well. I hope we can continue to work together on doing what is right for Durham College and what is right for the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Here, here. Thank you. 
Further member statements to members from Chatham, Kent, Essex. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Darcy McHugh, MPP of Chatham, Kent, from 1963 to 1977, served in the 27th Parliament of Ontario through to the 31st Parliament. Mr. McHugh served his community and his province proudly as the Treasurer of Ontario, Minister of Municipal Affairs, and Minister of Energy under the Bill Davis PC government. In his time here, Speaker, he was no stranger to the thrust and parry of the legislature. He could duke it out with the best of them, and more often than not, he gave better than he got. He was mockingly dubbed the Duke of Kent by an opposition MPP, but Darcy wore it as a badge of honour. To this very day, he is affectionately referred to as the Duke of Kent, not only in my writing of Chatham, Kent, Essex, but across Ontario. 1972, Mr. McHugh was part of a minor scandal when just one of 2,000 rubber stamp approvals he made as the Minister of Municipal Affairs drew questions as a potential conflict of interest. He resigned immediately because it was the right thing to do morally and as time has shown, even politically. When asked if he feels it was still the right decision to step down considering the larger scandals that have rocketed provincial politics in recent years without any, any resigning, McHugh said absolutely. He set the standard for accountability that should be followed today. McHugh went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hydro One and put a focus on achieving budget surpluses before it was even fashionable. These lessons and countless more can be found in his memoirs, The Duke of Kent. So thank you, Darcy, for what you have done in this Ontario legislature, and thank you for what you continue to do for the residents of Chatham-Kent. Thank you. I didn't see a prop. The uh, member's statements, the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, community safety is an ongoing issue throughout Ontario, and our government is creating strategies for a safer Ontario. There's been an uh, recently, there's been an increase in Brampton in crimes, uh, in crimes, and residents are truly concerned. With pizza robberies, break and enters, pets being stolen, the concern is genuine. In December, we had Minister Nuckby come to Brampton Springdale to listen to the input of residents about street checks to ensure that police interactions with the public are without bias, consistent, and carried out in a manner that, pro that promotes public confidence. The province takes the protection of human rights very seriously and has zero tolerance for any form of marginalization or discrimination that violates rights under the, human under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Ontario does not support any practice where police are stopping individuals without reason or cause. I also hosted another town hall in January in collaboration with the Peel Police, Peel Crime Prevention and Peel Stoppers for the local jewellers in the community. In light of the recent occurrences, the community needed to gain valuable knowledge on how to protect themselves and their families. Mayor Bonnie Crombie and Mississauga Councillor Caroline Parrish have also been very active on this. Tomorrow we will be hosting a town hall with Minister Nackby again in order to we want to invite community members to join us to give us their input on some of the changes that we'll be making in, in the Policing Services Act and modernizing the Police Services Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ottawa, Orléans. I, am, I was very proud to celebrate the 2016 Ordre de la Pléiade, which celebrates each year six Ontarians who have distinguished themselves exceptionally by their contribution uh, to the French language. There were f very important efforts from these people to promote the French culture in their respective communities, but also in the whole Francophony in Ontario. I would like to congratulate here one of my uh, constituents, Louis Fabry. Louis worked with will, perseverance and passion to promote Orléans and Francophonie in Ottawa. He was also recognized for his efforts for uh, accent aigu in Orléans. Louis Patry, Carmen Portelance, Lorraine Hamilton, Pierre Fouché, Diane Dubois, Alain Baudouin, all received the Ordre de la Pléiade. You are symbols for the generations to come. And thank you to the Francophone, Francophone Parliamentary Association for this initiative that started in 1976. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.